please welcome Mark Davis to Cloud Computing West. Thanks, Marty. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be with you here in, in Santa Monica. Uh, you know, in this session, obviously, the, the show today is, is all about uh, cloud computing. In this session, we're going to focus in on one particular aspect of it, um, which is uh, production um, and, and collaborating, uh, you know, how people collaborate in the, entertain, in the entertainment industry. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, there's, there's so much confusion about the cloud right now. Um, and, and the, the entertainment industry is, is no different. You know, there's as much confusion here as, as anywhere else. And there was a, a survey that just came out, which you may have seen, which I thought was pretty funny, uh, where people were interviewed about how much they actually know about the cloud. Uh, and here are some of the results. 22% uh, of people admit they've pretended to know what the cloud is. 29% uh, think cloud computing uses an actual cloud. 51% uh, believe stormy weather can interfere with, with cloud computing. Uh, and, and here's one which I think is maybe the most telling, which is 54% um, of the people who are interviewed claim to never use cloud computing, but 95% of them actually do. Um, so if you ask yourself, well, what, what are all these people doing, right? Well, you know, if, for example, if you use Gmail uh, or Hotmail for your email, you're working in the cloud. If you share video on YouTube uh, or files on Dropbox or Google Drive, uh, you're working in the cloud. Or even, you know, using any of the, the social media apps like Facebook or, or Twitter, you're, you're working in the cloud. So uh, chances are, even if you can't put a finger on it, really define what the cloud is, uh, you're probably already using it uh, today. But let's, let's try and define it, OK? Now, if, if you Google the cloud or go to Wikipedia, you'll find any number of definitions full of all the techno babble you can handle. Uh, but here's a real simple definition I like. Uh, the cloud is a place where you store stuff online and collaborate with other people. That's all. Um, and you know, th there's another way to think about the cloud. And it's just a data center. It's when you store your, your data somewhere else. Uh, but it's not just your data. It's also your software. It's your applications. Um, and, and that's really a profound shift in, in how people compute, use computers. You've probably heard a lot of hype uh, about the cloud. And you may be getting uh, cynical towards it or, or questioning why, why is all the hype there. Uh, and let me just throw some, some numbers out there. You know, Marty, when you invited me to NAB last year, there were uh, 150 million people using the cloud. And, and this number is referring to in the workplace, OK? So it's not talking about the social media apps. Facebook alone has a billion users, as you probably know. But in the workplace, 150 million. Um, but just in the span of about a year, um, that number has increased to, to 500 million. Um, so it's grown by threefold. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the size of this industry, uh, this year it's projected to be about $40 billion a year. Uh, and in four years, it's going to be about $100 billion a year. So it's a, it's a big industry already, uh, but it's, it's growing very quickly. And in fact, if you look at the fastest growing industries in the world, um, let's say you look at the top 10 fastest growing industries, you'll see things like solar power, uh, video games, uh, biotech. Uh, but the fastest growing industry by, by a comfortable margin um, is cloud computing. Um, and that, that's why you're hearing all, all, all the hype. Um, now, that's sort of the cloud at a high level. So let's zoom into the focus for today's session, which is production in the cloud. How are people in production using uh, these kind of tools? Uh, you may have seen a survey that came out last week, actually. It was commissioned by Avid put together by Ovum Research, and they interviewed people in, in production. And they found that 23% of video professionals are using cloud-based production tools. Uh, but the key here is that 75% of them are actively considering uh, using them. There's just a lot of interest uh, and curiosity about this, about this area. Uh, my company, uh, we actually do some research. Uh, and we talk to people in the space and say, are you using the cloud? What, what tools are you using? You know, how's it working out? Um, and we found that um, there's really five general categories of tools that people are using in, in production. Uh, in terms of email, uh, most people who are using cloud-based email tools are using Gmail in production. Uh, in terms of shared calendar, uh, Google Calendar is, is pretty popular. Uh, in terms of file sharing, uh, you know, when we asked this question a couple years ago, most people would tell us uh, Dropbox. Um, but now we're starting to hear more and more often uh, Google Drive 
because you may be aware that um, Google Drive is literally half the price of, of Dropbox, and that's driving uh, some people their way. Um, the next category is around what we call production elements, so little apps that help you do things related to production. So maybe you've heard of Script, uh, which is a, a browser-based script writing tool. Uh, Doddle, which helps you issue call sheets. Quick Film Budget, which, uh, which you can probably figure out what that one does. Um, and there's any number of these apps out there, and, and there seems like there's, there's new apps coming out uh, every day. And the last category is around video collaboration. So maybe you've heard of companies like Fifth Kind, Media Silo, uh, A-Frame. So companies that enable you to upload video into the cloud, uh, share it, and collaborate with, uh, with other people. So that's fine, right? There's a lot of stuff going on in this space. But, the, but there's a problem. And, and the problem is what you see right there. There's a lot of stuff going on. And as a practical matter, it can be difficult. You know, if you're managing a production team to say, all right, well, we're going to log in here for that thing and log in over there for that other thing, it can become unwieldy. It can become uh, complex. So what you've started to see is a trend towards sort of end-to-end -end production management, pulling all these pieces together um, in a single login. Um, and so there's companies out there doing some pretty interesting uh, stuff. So maybe you're, you've heard of Lightspeed uh, or Shotgun. And some of these companies are definitely worth you know, checking out. Um, but if you look at sort of the next evolution of where this is actually heading, um, what I think is that it's heading towards pulling together not only the production management piece, but also the video collaboration piece. So you have literally everything related to production in a single login. And there's, there's really two companies uh, playing in this area right now. Uh, the first is Adobe. So you may be familiar with um, Adobe's Story Plus product which is a script writing and, and scheduling tool. Uh, and maybe you've heard of Adobe Anywhere, which uh, they just announced at the IBC show, which is a cloud-based uh, editing tool where you can uh, use Adobe Premiere to edit video, but the, the, the video is up in the cloud, but you're using the software locally. Uh, you know, Adobe, I think, is doing some interesting things in terms of pulling, not to get too geeky here, but the metadata together. So for example, you can take the script and put it right in the timeline of, of your uh, video editing application. And that's kind of cool. Um, but there's one thing that people need to be aware of when, when you're looking at the Adobe suite, which is it's, you know, to use it to, to really take advantage of these tools, you have to be using Adobe Premiere. And if you use Adobe Premiere, that's great. That's cool. Um, but a lot of production people, particularly on the professional end of the spectrum, are using either uh, Final Cut uh, or Avid. Um, so a lot of those users are probably going to be reluctant um, to switch their core video editing application. Um, the other company in this space uh, is actually my company. It's called Cineos. We're based out of uh, New York City. Uh, and Cineos is a, it's a cloud platform for film and television production. And you can go to Cineos.com, and there's some little videos that, that explain it. It's a, it's a free tool. Uh, it's free to use Cineos. You get five gigs of cloud storage with it as well. But basically, uh, it's an end-to-end -end platform. So it has two main components. It's got a production office and production software. So in terms of the production office, um, it's got a set of apps, including a contact list to pull your production team together, uh, a calendar, just a very simple web-based calendar to keep everybody synced up, uh, and a file cabinet uh, where you can store your various documents. Uh, in fact, uh, the new version of Cineos also includes Microsoft's, if you've heard of the new version of Office, uh, it's called Office Web Apps. It's their cloud-based version of Office. Uh, and that's embedded for free in, in Cineos. Uh, so that's the production Office side of it. But there's also production software. And this is where uh, you really start to leverage the power of the cloud. So for example, there's a, uh, a script writing application uh, where you can write the script. Um, Oh, you could even upload a, a script in final draft format, which a number of people use in the industry. Um, you can break down your script, and you can do, you can do your shoot schedule uh, as well, even issue uh, call sheets. Uh, and there's other apps in there as well. There's a, a locations management app. Uh, there's a purchase orders app. Uh, and there's also a set of video management tools. Okay, So you can upload video uh, in professional formats, whether it's Avid or Final Cut, for example. Uh, you can collaborate on the video. You can actually annotate the video and do reviews uh, and approvals. Um, so it really is sort of an end-to-end -end, uh, suite of, the, of these different apps. Uh, and there's actually also uh, video conferencing capability uh, within Cineos as well. So you can do instant um, 
production meetings online, for example, with, with up to eight people. Um, so that's, that's CNEOs, and, and that's sort of an, an overview of you know, the tools that, that people are using. Uh, and I definitely encourage you to, to check them out, because a lot of these tools at least have a free trial. Um, so you can try them out and see which ones you know, work for your particular uh, workflow. Uh, but there is one question, and it's been touched on in, in some of the other panels here, which is, is it safe? You know, can you really trust your data in the cloud? Um, and it's an important question. And, and um, you, you may have seen an article in The Hollywood Reporter recently where uh, yours truly uh, went on a little bit of a rant um, about cloud-based security. Um, and I think the writer that I was talking to was a little surprised about um, how critical I was of a lot of cloud-based security practices. Um, but I am critical because um, there's a lot that can go wrong in the cloud, um, but there are some simple things that you can do to protect yourself, and there are some things that you should look for uh, to make sure that, that you're not going to uh, lose data, have your data stolen uh, in the cloud. And, and um, basically what we've done is we've broken it down into what we think are sort of seven essential steps to make sure you don't get lost in the cloud. These are things that you should look for as you're evaluating these different tools and make sure you check these off before you start using them. Uh, the first is make sure the cloud company has published security and privacy policies. Uh, and here I'm not talking about Facebook style, where everything's buried in the fine print where you're never going to see it. Uh, I'm talking about right on the home page. Uh, they should really uh, emphasize what their, what their security policies are uh, and how they're going to protect your information. The second is make sure that the companies have a strong track record. Just Google them, right? See if they've lost data in the past. Uh, they should also give you something called five nines, 99.999% uh, guaranteed uptime. Uh, and otherwise, in other words, the site won't be down for more than five minutes a year. They should guarantee that. If they believe in their product, they should guarantee that. Um, you should also know where your data will live. Now, some people say, I don't care where it is. It's in the cloud. Who cares? And I think that's the wrong approach. Um, there's, there's two companies out there who provide the infrastructure for a lot of these cloud-based apps, Amazon Web Services and Rackspace. And between the two of them, they have a 90-plus percent market share, right? They're both good. Either one is, is fine. I happen to prefer Amazon Web Services, but either one is, is fine. I don't have time to go into why in this session, but as long as the apps that you're using are running on one of these two companies, you should be fine. If they're not, it's a bit of a question mark. Uh, they should also have off-site backups, okay? So you may have heard recently that Amazon Web Services had some outages of four hours, six hours, whatever it is, um, and companies like Foursquare went down. Well, here's the secret behind that, okay? Amazon Web Services has two very large data centers, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and they make it very easy for software companies like mine to use both data centers. You just have to pay a little extra. And if you use both data centers, then if one goes down, then in real time, it switches over to the other one. So if you're working with a company and they went down during the Amazon Web Services outage, shame on them, okay? Because that tells you that they're not using offsite backups. The next thing you should look for um, is an easy way to get your data and to delete your data. Okay, so think of your data as like your money money you're putting in the bank. If you put money in the bank, you should be able to get it back when you want it, right? Same with your data. Uh, any site that, you, that you're using should make it very easy to either delete your data entirely or to download your data so you can take it with you. And the seventh one is, is make sure you, get, you can get a free trial. Most cloud-based applications will give you a free trial, but this is really the best way to just try it out, see if it works. If it doesn't, no problem, you move on to the next one. If it does, only then start to pay for that particular product. Okay, I think I'm running low on time here. Um, if you're interested in, in getting started in, in the cloud, here's a couple things I would recommend. First of all, like I mentioned before, uh, experiment, right? So try out some of the tools um, that you've seen here and see which ones you know, work best for you. Again, only use the, the free version until you see if it's, if it's a good tool for you. Uh, and I'm going to date myself here, but if you remember the show Hill Street Blues, you remember the dispatcher used to say to the cops before they went out on the, on the beat, hey, let's be careful out there. Uh, I would say the same thing to you. Um, just go in there with your eyes open, follow these simple steps, and make sure you're, you know, you're protecting yourself when you go into the cloud. 
Um, if you've got questions, please email me uh, at mark at cneos.com, or better yet, uh, we're based in, in New York City, so if you're in New York, come and see us. All right, thank you. Do you work in production? If so, then you know how challenging it can be to collaborate with your team. Everyone is busy running around, working on tight deadlines, and maybe even in different time zones. So how do you collaborate? Maybe you use paper, or email, or various web applications, or more likely, all of these. But using all of these different tools can be really difficult to manage. Is there a better way? Now there is, with Cineos, the virtual production office that's based in the cloud. Cineos is a comprehensive suite of powerful production tools that streamline the way you collaborate with your team. Write and edit your script collaboratively and in real time. You can even upload a script in the popular final draft format and share it that way. Create a shared production schedule to keep everyone in sync. Share critical location information so everyone shows up in the right place, on time. Create and distribute call sheets and confirm that everyone received them. Create and manage your budget while restricting who sees it by setting access permissions. Use the file cabinet to store all the documents for your show, or even create new ones right in Cineos. Send messages and alerts to individuals, to departments, or to the entire production team. Send them by email or instant message. Cineos also has a powerful set of video tools, so you can share video files, log your shots, and do reviews and approvals all within your web browser. You can even use Cineos for video conferencing for up to eight people for things like virtual production meetings and virtual table reads. Use Cineos the way you want it, in any web browser, on your Mac, PC, iPhone, or Android device. And if you've got a Dropbox or Google Drive account, simply connect them to Cineos, so you finally got everything in one place. Cineos is so easy to use that you can be up and running in less than five minutes. But it's also completely customizable, so you can set it up to match your exact workflow. If you've ever got questions, you can get amazing customer service from a real live human being. So what's the best part? Cineos is completely free, including five gigabytes of cloud storage. So get started now at Cineos.com and set up your free virtual production office in the cloud.